Hello, Begbrook, and welcome to episode three of Wilcox's Wacky Experiments. It's that time again where we are going to be exploring science with fun and exciting activities. But remember, remember all these things you can use with items from around your homes. On this show, we always have a mini experiment and a main experiment. That mini experiment shouldn't need a lot of resources and the main experiment might need a few more, but it's still gonna be really, really exciting. But before we do any of our experiments, we need to quickly recap our three. But before we do any of the experiments, we need to quickly recap our three safety rules. Rule number one is to make sure you ask permission from an adult at home. Rule number two is to make sure you have plenty of space to do your experiments. And rule number three is to make sure you do these ex experiments step by step. Okay, so it's now time for our mini experiment today. And our mini experiment is going to be a, a lot like a famous magic trick. So if you think about a magic show, sometimes a magician will um, get a contestant up on the stage, put them inside a box, and then stab loads of swords through the box. And then miraculously, the person gets out of the box. But we're not gonna be using a box, we're not gonna be using swords, and we're not gonna be using people. Okay, so the things you're going to need for this mini experiment is first a resealable bag. It must be one with a zip lock at the top. You're then going to need a pack or a few pencils, making sure that they are round edged. You're going to need some water. You're not going to need the glass, but you're going to need the water that's in the glass. And then, just as a, an extra safety point, I would have a container that you um, can catch the water in if it goes wrong. Okay, so step number one, you need to grab your container and have that in front of you, because this will catch any water if it does go wrong. Okay, so you're gonna need your resealable bag and you're gonna need to fill it up with water until about three quarters of the way up. Okay, so we're gonna open it up, grab our glass of water, oh, and then we're gonna fill it up as much as we can. Okay, that's not quite enough. I'm gonna have to grab another one. Okay, so now that you have got your bag of water that is three quarters full, it's now time to wow our audience. Okay, we're gonna have to hold the top of the bag really tight, make sure it's still over your container because we don't want any water going anywhere. Hopefully, if this experiment goes right, then there will be no water leaking at all. Okay, so you need to grab one of your round edge pencils and it must be a round edge one because it is a smoother transition through the bag. Okay, so hopefully this is going to work. We're gonna push the pencil all the way through the bag and no water is going to come out and you have to do this quite quickly. Are we ready? Three, two, one. There's one. And then we're going to grab another pencil. Three, two, one. And oh, still no water. And grab another one. Three, two, one. All the way through. Still no leakage. Look at that. No leakage. And another one. All the way through. All the, and let's do it. Let's just keep going. Imagine these are swords going through the box. One. And there we have it. You have used science to become a magician. Okay. As an extra challenge, I want you to find a contestant or a magician's assistant and see if you can have a go at this experiment over their head. They will be wowed. So what is the science? Your plastic bag is most likely made of a polymer called low-density polyethene, LDPE, which consists of incredibly long molecules, a bit like strands of spaghetti. It's easy to push the sharp pencil between these molecules and they are flexible enough to form a temporary seal between the bag and the sides of the pencil. Remove them though and the water leaks out as the molecules have been pushed out of place permanently. Okay, so now it's time for our main experiment and this experiment we're going to create something that you can use with a large body of water, such as in the bathtub or in a small paddling pool. For this experiment, you will need some sellotape, some scissors, a old butter container, make sure it's still got the lid as well, some straws, 
some elastic bands, and this is optional, but you can have a ruler and a pen to make sure that you are accurate with your design. Okay, so step number one, you're going to need to take the lid off of your container and make sure the inside of your container has been washed out. And we're going to stick our straws on the sides of the container like this, making sure that half the straw is sticking out of one end. So I'm going to be using my tape. I would recommend using lots of tape at this stage to really make sure that those straws are on securely. So scissors. There they are. I'm going to cut that bit off. Okay. Stick on really, really securely so it's not going to come off. I would try to make that the straws as level as possible. And there we have it, just like that. Okay, so step number two, we're going to need to make a square out of our lid, but our square needs to be a specific size, and it can be no bigger than the gap in between the straws. So, this is where your ruler and pen could come in handy. Um, you don't have to do this, but if you want to be more accurate, then I would recommend using the ruler and the pen. So we're just gonna create a square shape, square-ish shape in the middle of the lid and then we're going to use our scissors to cut out that shape. It might be that you would like to get an adult to do this part because the plastic is very solid. So you will need lots of strength to cut through the plastic to make sure you have got your shape. just like that. And finally, you have got your boat and then you have got your paddle propeller. So this is where the elastic band comes in handy. So we need to put the elastic band over the straws about halfway down so that it's nice and secure, like that. And then our paddle propeller is gonna go in the middle of the elastic band. And then we're going to twist, keep twisting until it's Nice and tight. Keep going. The straws may come in a little bit, but that's okay. So you need to hold that in place, and then you will place your paddle boat in some water. And then when you are ready, you will then let go of your paddle, and then it will do this, like that, and your boat should go along. And there we have it. You have created your very own paddle boat that you can use for bath time or even time in your paddling pool. As a little extra, you could even put your toys inside the boat and watch them move around the bath or your paddling pool. Unfortunately, I don't have a large body of water like a bathtub or a paddling pool, so you guys are going to have to do the experimenting for me. Okay, one extra little recommendation I would suggest is that your straws are close to the bottom of the container as possible. This means that your paddle will be able to reach the water. Okay, as a little extra challenge, I want you guys to experiment with different size paddles, making sure you might have a longer one, a thicker one, um, a smaller one, a bigger one. Uh... So what is the science? As you twist the elastic band, you are changing movement energy, called kinetic energy, into stored up energy, called potential energy. When you let it go, this potential energy is changed back into kinetic energy as the bands unwind, making the paddle move. Okay, that's all folks. Thank you for watching episode three of Wilcox's Wacky Experiments. Don't forget to check out episode four next time.